Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Keeping Your Citizens Safe, a Proactive Approach to Managing Public Health Threats. In this session, we'll explore how AKA's public health outbreak tracking and monitoring solution, built on Microsoft Dynamics 365, empowers your frontline public health workers to proactively manage any health threat. My name is Patrick Dennison, Marketing Manager at AKA Enterprise Solutions, and I'll be moderating the presentation. Before we get started, I just wanted to run through a couple of housekeeping notes. To optimize viewing quality of the presentation, please close any programs you have running besides GoToWebinar. If you experience any visual, any visual or audio issues, please contact GoTo at care.sixtricksonline.com slash GoToWebinar slash contact us. Also, I wanted to point out the questions pane in the control panel in the upper right corner of your screen. Using this functionality, you may submit questions at any time during the presentation and will address as many as possible during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. If we don't get to your question, we will follow up with you after the call. The webinar is being recorded, and a link to the recording will be sent to you within the next few business days. Today's session will be presented by Matt Panzano, Senior Sales Executive at AKA Enterprise Solutions. Also on the line is Camille Jetzer, Senior Solutions Architect, who will be answering questions. I'd now like to introduce Matt. Thank you very much. So I am, uh, I am uh, Matt Panzano, I'm the uh, CRM pre-sales manager, and I do a lot of the uh, presentations. My job is just to kind of work with our customers and uh, see what kind of business solutions uh, that the Dynamics platform can solve for us. So one of the things we're talking about today is an uh, outbreak tracking solution uh, that we've put in place uh, for several municipalities. And one of the reasons uh, this has kind of come upon us, just kind of in the news lately, uh, is kind of the Zika piece. Uh, so we do have these outbreaks that uh, quickly happen, and trying to have a system kind of in place for that or trying to retrofit current systems uh, to kind of manage an outbreak uh, be it it's small or large, you know, in Florida this was a, a very big deal where I am from uh, with Zika. Uh, we were kind of a, one of the big pieces and it had a lot of challenges trying to track where someone might have been exposed, who was exposed, when they were exposed, kind of keep all those facts and pieces of information to try to get ahead of the issue. So what has kind of changed in recent years? Well, it's kind of no surprise, probably the biggest change has been social media. Uh, obviously, uh, a few years back, it was nice to have a website. Hey, we have a website for our citizens. But now our citizens are kind of demanding that we have uh, social media. We have mobile enabled. We use uh, system messaging. We use you know, Facebook, all your types of social media and technology. And that's really changing the whole dynamic, the way governments really have to uh, serve their citizens and work with their citizens. There's lots again for tools for engaging with citizens. So obviously we have our uh, traditional uh, types of websites. We can do kind of uh, Twitter and Facebook and those pieces, but lots and lots of different ways to kind of do it. But agencies of all different types really have to say, what is my online profile? Am I keeping my online profile up to date? So uh, instead of updating in one place, we may have to update in 12 places or 15 places. So how do we kind of uh, get ahead of that curve? So we think one of the solutions we could have is actually the Microsoft Dynamics 365 platform. And this is a full platform. Uh, today we're going to be showing uh, the Dynamics 365 uh, in the CRM model for customer service. You can see it also has sales modules, field service, marketing modules, project server automation modules. But kind of surrounding that is that entire Microsoft cloud platform. Uh, the common data service, the flow, so kind of doing workflow through all those pieces. Obviously a lot of our users have used Office 365 that's been out for a while. And it's really kind of again changed the whole dynamic about how we think about software. You know, we don't put the CDs in the machine anymore. Uh, you know, stuff just gets delivered via the web. But Microsoft has taken the Dynamics platform and really, really uh, wedged it right in between the other solutions. So everything works together. So your business intelligence, uh, all your online of business applications, and allowing third-party applications to plug their solutions into the same platform. And of course, Azure. So really, all the foundation of these pieces are on Microsoft's cloud solution, Azure, to work. 
So let's talk about our health uh, outbreak tracking solution. Now, AKA, uh, you know, we can leverage Dynamics 365 to kind of help with departments, entire municipalities. It's a very flexible solution. Uh, it allows us to uh, very quickly have folks take information in, disseminate information out, route information back and forth as we need to go through it. AKA has been doing the government work for over 25 years. We have a breadth in public sector, very deep understanding of Dynamics 365. Uh, that includes all the platforms, so not just the Dynamics CRM, there's all the accounting solutions uh, on the Microsoft Dynamics platform as well, we're very, very versed in. Now again, we've done public health outreach, youth community, you guys can probably read as well as I can, constituent relationship management, working with lots of different agencies and lots of different government pieces. So some of the key features of the solution is out, inbound and outbound communications. Again, being able to, if information's coming in, great, but we also then disseminate information out. Very robust case management. So uh, we'll actually show you the solution today, uh, but we can embellish these solutions for lots and lots of more information as we well. But the case management also lets us do dynamic flows or workflows, depending on rules that are created and roles. So I might have roles and we're gonna play several different roles today. We'll play a call screener role, which might just be a, a frontline person taking information in, and then more kind of an ambassador, an outbound ambassador role where they're more getting more detailed into what the uh, case solution might be. Let's pretty sure some social media integration, right? Solutions today have to have social media integration. Uh, can we actually take uh, something from Facebook or Twitter and actually create a case, or the opposite, actually post out there and uh, get our information out via that way? The workflow engine is very, very flexible. Uh, so depending on what your department might need uh, or versus the other department, it is. Also, the solution is very configurable. So we will work with the organization and kind of get it up and running, but a lot of the workflows and a lot of pieces you see today, it's just a matter of kind of a business analyst in your organization uh, learning how to tweak the system. They don't really have to be a developer anymore. Obviously, data security. Need to be very, very secure with that. Microsoft has made fantastic strides uh, having a pure government cloud. It's only the cloud, only cloud provider that provides a strict government cloud for your data security. Uh, also analytics. So analytics, being able to analyze the data, it's great having all this information coming in, but if it takes me weeks and months to actually analyze it, we're in trouble. So with a solution like this with an outbreak, you literally have to analyze information in minutes versus days or weeks. And also software as a service. The solution we're showing you today can also, uh, it runs on the cloud. So we're showing the cloud solution, the software as a service, uh, very little uptime for configuring equipment, et cetera, as we go through it. So let me kind of jump into the demonstration here. Oh, before I actually jump there, I had one more slide. Sorry about that. Uh, so kind of we'll go into our first scenario. So our first scenario is kind of our call screening rep. And now many of the uh, organizations we work with, the volunteers, volunteers actually help in a crisis mode. Uh, so whether it's a crisis of a hurricane coming or something like that, or maybe uh, a crisis of an outbreak. So we have a lot of volunteers. So those folks may not be primarily trained in using your computer. So we do have the ability of actually providing scripts uh, and having the system kind of walk them through particular steps to do that. Uh, also, really being able to say, I'm trained, I'm screened, I can do this. But they're really kind of just triaging the call. So, you know, if they're potentially exposed, well, I'm not going to handle that call. I'm kind of saying, well, yeah, here's some symptoms of uh, our example today is going to be a measles outbreak. So here's some examples of some of the issues you might want to look for in a measles outbreak. Uh, oh, if you thought you were exposed or we need to actually take it to the next level, uh, we can have the system do many things. I could manually just transfer that call over to uh, one of our outbound ambassadors, or I can have the system dynamically create the case and actually route it to a queue that the next person's gonna go ahead and take the next role. And that will be our next role, that'd be our outbound person. Uh, and we'll actually do several roles and we'll come back to some slides and just kind of uh, do some recaps as we go. Before I start, I know there was a, 
a question here. I don't know if we had any questions waiting or not. But uh, all right, now we will switch into the demonstration. Just close down some pieces here. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is, and we're we are kind of our call screener, our inbound screener, uh, and how we could actually work with that would be what we call through a dashboard. Uh, and the dashboard lets us do several different options. Uh, the dashboards are configurable by role, by individual. Uh, it really makes it very flexible the way you want to do it. Uh, and this is a kind of any of our active calls that might be coming in, maybe particularly my calls that might be coming in, some graphics and charts, also some integration. We'll actually show with the social engagement a little bit later. Uh, but we may actually see what posts uh, might be coming in from uh, any of our Facebook pages. So this might be our posts or Facebook pages. And again, just kind of giving that option for the other users. So our scenario uh, today is we're going to have uh, some folks call in. The first call will just be a kind of a call. They have some questions about measles. We'll kind of take that call and easily uh, kind of show how easy it is to kind of clear that out. Then we're going to take a little bit of an escalation call. Someone thinks they were exposed to uh, measles and we'll kind of take it from the next step there. So I'm going to go up here, uh, very simple. If I wanted to go ahead uh, here on a particular call, sorry. Let's refresh this real quick. Sorry, we had lots of stuff going before we uh, started the piece here. So I'm just going to go ahead here and create a new call. So I kind of hit the plus button and create a new call. So we actually come up and give some uh, the caller's name. Uh, let's say it was Mary Kane. Uh, a phone number. We'll just put some uh, the Hollywood phone numbers in here as we say. Zip code. Uh, the caller's category. So what the caller might be. Now again, these are some examples of categories. Any of the screens or information you see here can be modified or changed. So this just might be a general public. The reason for the call is, you know, they just wanted some uh, disease information. I could say, you know, gave info. Maybe they had some questions. They wanted us to send out some information or gave them, uh, we gave them a pointer to a website or something like that. Thank you very much for calling. Save and close. Um, and then basically that call now comes into the system. Uh, and that one's kind of done. So right here, you'll see here, Mary Kane, I'm kind of done with that particular uh, caller. Now let's go ahead and do another call uh, for someone who's having a little more uh, other issues here. So we'll call this one here, uh, Mary Jackson. Again, we'll do the phone number, the zip code, and this might, again might be general public. But this time we have several different reasons. So Mary thinks she was exposed at her son's school. She's not really sure, but she knows there are some kids uh, in the office when she picked up her son from school that had measles. So she might have been potentially exposed. So one of the things you'll see with the system is it dynamically kind of gives us additional options as we choose pieces. So now you'll see we have a contact piece in here. So I just want to actually create contact, a contact for Mary so we can actually associate that contact with the case we're going to create a little bit later on. Now I could go into the system itself and see if there's any other Marys. We might have another Mary. Uh, in our case here, uh, we don't. So I'm just going to create new. Uh, and what the solution will do is just pop up a quick screen. So here we go. So uh, actually, let me switch it around. And again, I can fill in what other information we might be, what her email might be. Uh, we'll just do mj at uh, yahoo.com. What's the preferred phone number? Then her address, uh, whatever the address might be. Uh, let's see, 900 Gregory Avenue, City of the West Orange, New Jersey my hometown where I used to live many years ago. And then if we had the county, now we're going to go ahead and kind of uh, do a quick save. 
And when we come back, uh, we're going to change slides. We'll actually come back and see what the next step in the process would be. So now we're going to kind of change roles, and we're going to be kind of an outreach rep, or I call him a, a, a outreach ambassador. So uh, I ran call centers for many years, and uh, ambassador sounded a lot better than call center person or a CSR or something like that. So uh, now, so in our scenario here, uh, that particular case now, because it was a potential exposure, uh, went in and got created, and it automatically went to our exposure queue. Uh, and what the queue is, is just kind of a holding bucket, as I like to call it, for either cases or calls or whatever they might be. And then me as an outbound person, what I'm doing is I need to reach these citizens and to get some more information, where they were exposed, get some more detail. So one of the things we've also done here is we have kind of a customized uh, survey for the exposure. So depending on the exposure to what the particular outbreak might be, in our case, again, it might be, it's going to be measles. Uh, we could go through these particular surveys and it's going to ask us questions and it's going to be intelligent as we go through the surveys. You know, if I choose yes or no, kind of give us the right answers or, or move different questions. Uh, so it's been escalated and we'll also go ahead and talk a little bit about how we can do this stuff through social media also, not just through uh, just one kind of standard uh, kind of media input option. So we're going to switch here. And we are now going to switch to the ambassador dashboard. Now, the ambassador dashboard, a little bit more detailed uh, information as we go through. Uh, you'll see again, uh, we have some summaries of our kind of uh, Twitter, blogs, Facebook, et cetera, kind of a little dynamic of, you know, where the cases are coming from. Uh, my active cases, my activities, what I might need to uh, be following up on. Uh, and in our case here, we had created that new call as the inbound screener for Mary Jackson. So you'll see now this case has now been put in the queue, uh, and I could be one of many folks doing these outbound uh, or outbound reaches back here. So I'm going to go ahead and just open up that particular case. So this particular case here. Uh, there's some information on the screen uh, as we go through. And again, any of the kind of screens and those pieces uh, can be uh, dynamically changed or changed as we need them to change. Uh, so what do you think you'll notice up here is what we call a toolbar. And this is one of the things that kind of guide us through the process. So this is the process of what we need to do uh, for potential exposure. Uh, we're going to kind of get some basic information. Uh, we're going to do a survey, et cetera. Uh, you'll notice a lot of the information was already filled in because we had that data already. Again, so the solution is smart enough to be connected together, not to do that. Uh, and we are right now at this particular stage in our step, saying, hey, we're just getting some information. Now, inside the form itself, we have more basic information, measles or home address, phone, et cetera, where it might be. Uh, same thing over here. These are the information I put in uh, the data system. Now, in the middle here, we have our activities. And our activities uh, allow us to do such, you know, typical activities, add a phone call, add a task, add pieces. But you'll see an activity was dynamically created. So one of the other things we can do with workflow is have the system dynamically create uh, other records for us. So this actually created a uh, verification task to make sure that Mary Jackson's information is correct. Obviously, if you know, we need to take the next step, we want to make sure there's no kind of mistypings, et cetera. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and what you'll see here is I have verification. Uh, it automatically put our case number in. So again, the workflow was in here. So it's saying, okay, is this your correct data we put in? Okay, yes, it's great. That is the correct data. Perfect. I just kind of say I'm done with that, and I kind of go on to the next piece that we're working with. And you'll see additional uh, processes show up. We're going to follow up. Uh, in a week or so with that particular case to see how we're doing. So again, the system is very proactive the way we would kind of do our next things. And some other options we have also over here. So if we do have the, uh, we said maybe we called up uh, Mary, we have her on the line now, and she just wanted some more signs and symptoms of measles. Well, the solution has a full knowledge base. 
But one of the things we do have here is when I went to knowledge base records, I didn't have to type anything or anything. The system was intelligent enough to say, well, here's kind of the title of the case. It might have to do something with measles exposure. So I have several articles here that I could take a look at. So I'm going to go here, take a look at this. Hey, the symptoms are here with a link. Uh, I can connect this uh, with that particular case. Uh, I can also see the number of views. So if that's a particular article that's used a lot, et cetera, I could easily send that uh, out to our uh, constituent or citizen if we needed to do that. So we could also uh, do those other pieces as we go through. And we can do activity. So the next step in the process is to, well, we need to go ahead and start our survey. So yes, it sounds like she was exposed. She might have some symptoms. Let's go ahead and do the survey and kind of do some other uh, additional options. So right here, you'll just see our next stage. So I'm going to click on next stage. And this will ask us, hey, do we want to go to an existing exposure survey? Because for our demonstration today, we're going to ask all the questions. Sometimes you don't have that luxury of time, right? Sometimes somebody's busy and saying, you know, I don't have time for all these questions. Well, we could have then, if we already had a survey started with this particular person, we could stop and come back. But for our demo today, we're going to go ahead and create a new one. But again, you'll notice the toolbar up here, or the process bar changes with us. So all I have to do here is fill out some information. Mary, when, when did you think you were exposed to the uh, outbreak? You should say, okay, well, it was last Friday when I picked my son up at school. Okay, and then what school does your son go to? Well, uh, he goes to Hazel Avenue Elementary. Okay, so there's Hazel a Avenue Elementary. I can also have gone in here and created new if that particular location wasn't in our solution. But nobody really likes to see me type during a demo, so we just kind of had one kind of pre-populated. So who's the person interviewing? Uh, so is it Mary or is it Mary's husband or et cetera? In our case, it's going to be Mary. And again, who's that particular person? So it's Mary herself. Now, the other thing too is you'll see that we have several sections uh, of this survey going through. So this data here, part one, was all filled in. Again, a uh, uh, arbitrary number here, so our survey ID, so we have IDs. So then we go through a series of questions that we ask the citizen. Uh, first one is, uh, did you come in contact with anyone at this location? So not only did maybe you come in contact, but anyone else. She said, yes, I did come in contact with the principal of the school. His name is Tom McKay. So again, we're going to go ahead and do a quick search. We have lots of Toms, but not a Tom McKay. So again, we're going to just go ahead. We will add uh, uh, Tom's information in here. And she's not really sure where Tom lives. She does, does, does know Tom's email address. So we can put that information in, whatever information she might have. Uh, it is a school in West Orange, so we'll just figure maybe he does live somewhere in New Jersey uh, instead of uh, doing that long commute. And we'll just go ahead and put the zip code for New Jersey. And just that easy, the contact has now been added to that particular case. And we could go through there if there's literally 20 people that were exposed, you could go through and add 20 people. So again, we just keep going down the line here uh, for more questions. Now again, the questions kind of uh, are dynamically, will dynamically change depending on your answer. So if so, first question is, you know, do you work in healthcare? So if this person was exposed at school and works in healthcare, well, they're exposing a lot of the folks. Uh, so if I say no, we kind of go on our merry way. If I happen to say yes, you'll see, well, where do you work? But we're going to go no and just leave that. So you just see the questions kind of change. Uh, were you born before 1957? We can say yes. Uh, how many vaccines have you had for the measles? Well, zero. Uh, have you ever had them? No. Uh, are you, because we knew Mary was female, uh, she's pregnant? No. So again, just kind of keep going down. Uh, we go down to the next part, kind of our medical questions. Uh, have you had a fever since the exposure date? Well, yes, Mary said she is running a fever. Uh, and the date of exposure was the 19th, but she had the fever several days later. So that is very kind of symptomatic of measles uh, having that. Did she have a rash? In her case, there was no. And again, if there was a rash, we could describe the rash. Uh, her medical 
history. She's just basically saying nothing major in the past six months. Uh, she didn't see a health care provider. She wasn't admitted to the hospital. And again, these questions could be uh, anything. Now, obviously, for our demonstration, we have these questions. The questions can really be tailored to whatever needs it might be. So obviously, for another outbreak, it might you may not need these type of questions, or you might need these type of questions. Now, what you'll see here at the bottom is the solution automatically took all the questions, how the Q&A went through, and kind of calculated what we think the survey risk would be. And this person is definitely at risk. They haven't ever, they were kind of in 1957 where measles were very prevalent. They never had a measles shot. They've never had the disease before. So this person is pretty uh, prevalent to kind of get it. So you'll see here, and our next stage in the process would be, can be at risk. So this particular person is at risk. All right, so we're now, for just taking that particular survey, uh, we can actually go ahead and do that. And again, we can have the system, we're gonna show some follow-up pieces for this in our next piece. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is, now we've kind of taken that case and we're gonna switch gears a little bit and still be an outbound person, but an outbound person that particularly just works in the social media arena. So we do have a lot of organizations now having folks dedicated for maybe chat conversations or. Uh, you know, so if you have chat in your uh, uh, service centers, uh, having folks do that. So it's a different kind of skill set uh, than being on the phone. I was on the phone for five years. Still the hardest thing I ever did uh, was be on the telephone. You know, because as I say, no one ever calls to say hello, right? Uh, it's always an issue with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to show a little bit about what we call our social engagement piece. Now, this is an additional piece that is included uh, with the Microsoft uh, the Dynamics Online platform uh, that you could leverage. And essentially, the solution allows us to kind of monitor our social media pieces. So in here, we have something called the Social Center. And this is really specifically built for kind of folks like I'm playing in this role here, kind of an outbound social media person, where it's kind of funneling all the feeds in. And again, I can pick the feeds and add the streams. So here, kind of, I have a catch-all kind of from uh, you know, kind of blogs and websites and those kind of pieces. Here, if I have specific information from Facebook or from Instagram. So as I go through these particular pieces here, uh, I notice this particular outbreak uh, in Minneapolis. So this might be something that we might want to take a look at or maybe even get in contact with the folks in Minneapolis, maybe kind of see how they're handling it or you know, what kind of issues they might have. Or I could have just had you know, a citizen and actually created this a case. So, what I can do here is assign this to somebody, and it knows who I am, so this is connected to uh, my other piece, and I'm going to assign it to myself, so I'll just assign it to myself. I can also give it a specific color, uh, and again, you can name these colors as whatever colors you'd like uh, to go ahead and do that, uh, and then we can actually go ahead and create a case right from here. Uh, so we'll sell this case from social but I need to spell social right. I have to spell social. So that's going to go out now, and then actually that post now goes into our dynamic CRM solution and actually creates a case. Now some of the other things we can also do from here is you'll notice as we hover over this, we can actually see what kind of sentiment we may have uh, on that, but we could also publish back responses. So if I come in here and I see this, I can actually publish a response, and then post it back to that particular person or persons that posted that particular twit, uh, Twitter feed, twit, sorry, uh, Facebook post, whatever it might be. So I could very easily kind of do that right from here as well. Okay. Now, changing gears a little bit, let's show a little bit of the data. Let me just get some data up here so it's always easier to show stuff. So I'm just going to get some time frames here so we'll show some data. And this is uh, kind of the uh, overview interface. And what this does is that takes all our social media that we actually said we're going to track this and track this and pull it all together. So you'll see our sentiment, our categories, locations of uh, insights, sources, so Twitter, Facebook, etc., uh, our volume, any of our key phrases. Uh, any, this is the search topic we're going against here and some of the authors of this particular uh, data. We also can go to conversations and actually see what the conversations might be. And I can drill into any of these here. 
Uh, so if I go into the measles one, I actually get some more detail about that, trending fra phrases, et cetera, as we go through it. And let me move this little guy out of my way here. That's what I'm trying to get to. The other thing I can also see are the posts. I mean, I can see right down to the Twitter posts here in this example. Uh, so I can see what that particular Twitter post was. Uh, again, I could go in and assign it. I could link it to Dynamics and create a case. Uh, I could go ahead and retweet that if I wanted to do that right from here. So some really powerful tools that you can have. Uh, and again, we also can do some other stuff like activity maps. I don't know if uh, we have any data today. We'll take a quick look at activity maps. If not, uh, we'll just move on. Activity maps actually goes out and kind of maps out any of the sentiments and buzz for the past 24 hours. Uh, it may or may not have pulled anything up in those last 24 hours. I don't think it did. Uh, let me just do a quick sentiment map, but no. So if we had some more posts, it would go out there and uh, grab some more data. So a really powerful tool, uh, very well integrated with the Dynamics uh, solution uh, as we go through that. And I just want to give you a little taste of some of the social pieces. Now, before we go back into here, let's go back to our next role here which would be our follow-up. So these are folks kind of following up with the health, uh, you know, health workers. So these might be health workers following up. Hey, Mary, uh, sounds like you're exposed to measles. We need to kind of get you taking the next step, right? So we can either get communications out to Mary uh, for any of the communications pieces, what the next steps might be, uh, et cetera. So this role, uh, the follow-up role, they're winning, we're going to try to send out targeted communications to that. Now, say the survey had resulted into saying, you know, you're at low risk, but you should probably get a, you know, a measles shot, right? Those kind of things. So we actually can do that. And we can do that through a lot of different media. So obviously, we can do stuff through uh, form letters or letters themselves. We can also do stuff through uh, texting. So if we want to go through texting to do that. So whatever kind of communications might work better for the citizen, we could go ahead and work through that. So let's go back in here. Oops, wrong one. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go in and get a little bit uh, uh, into the uh, solution themselves here. So what we're gonna do is I need to do follow-ups. So I'm gonna go up here and these are all the contacts I need to follow up with, okay? And as we go through the solution, we're going to show a little bit more about how the solution kind of works. But right now we're coming in and we have different views. And views allow us to kind of see columns and rows or columns and data. So right now we see kind of these active contacts. So these are the contacts we need to go ahead and follow up with. Uh, these are folks that kind of have been uh, exposed as we go through. Now what I can do here, you'll see here Mary Jackson uh, has come into that group. Uh, I could actually highlight a bunch of these folks here. And I could do a, a mail merge. So if we were kind of kind of sending out a letter or pieces in here, the solution does have kind of full mail merge. So remember, this is all built on the Microsoft platform. So built on the Microsoft platform also allows us to leverage your typical office solutions or office suites. So I could actually go out here, do a merge template, uh, template actually create those letters and send those letters out. So we can actually kind of do the mail merge piece there. Now we could also do more an individual piece. So let's open up Eva here. So we'll open up Eva's record. So this is kind of the information we have on Eva. You'll see here, uh, Eva's basically um, on a particular, she's likely protected. That was her survey results. So again, you'll saw, see the solution being able to tie the survey piece back to the citizen themselves. Uh, but for Eva here, I can also do uh, just using straight Word templates. So maybe I just wanted to do a notification in a Word template, uh, and I could just bring up the Word template. And again, there's direct plugins for the office solution from that. So here we came from AKA County, putting all the particular information in for that particular letter. And I could then click on that letter and then email the letter out. You also notice we do have other options. So I could do an invite, an appointment. I can also do an SNS, SMS message here to Eva. So maybe I'm giving her a text message with the information or a text message with the link uh, that she can actually come back and get the information. Again, tying in a lot of the social and the other pieces in there. 
Before we go to the last piece, which will be doing some reporting and some analytics, I just want to see if we have any questions uh, in here. While we're waiting, I don't see any questions unless I'm going in the wrong area, but I don't see anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Actually, um, Matt, there was a, there was a comment from one of our um, attendees um, that you may have missed there, uh, talking about. Uh, tracking um, other people you were exposed with when we were back on the survey. Um, Pam Cole mentioned uh, that you would also want to ask the contact if there was anybody with them um, when they attended, when they went to the exposure location. This is an important way to find additional people, minors and things like that. So thank you, Pam, for that comment. Um, and this is a great point, right? And so the key to what we're doing here by tracking those additional contacts, whether it's that you went to that location with them or if you happen to you know, know other people were there um, at the same time, is tracking those contacts actually puts them in the queue for outbound coordinate, uh, communication. So by identifying these additional people, they'll go onto the queue for people to call them and actually do these surveys with them as well. So we're expanding that um, sort of that grasp of who else might be exposed. We can map those things so you can see sort of the spread. And so it's, it's uh, getting a handle on not just the people we know um, or have, you know, people coming into us, but also trying to be proactive with additional people. So that's a great point. Thanks, Pam. Yeah, and that, that actually goes right through to the site, too. So if the exposure site is news to the folks at the site, uh, maybe they didn't know someone had measles there, we also can track the site, uh, the source of that particular site, and then get, get take some proactive pieces in there. But that's actually one of the great points about the solution. It's very flexible. So if there are specific questions you need to ask for your municipality, your group, your pieces, we can add those questions or remove questions or do whatever we need to do. Uh, to do that. And again, it's all through doing a, some con just configuration of the system, uh, not really kind of writing a lot of lines of code to do that. So lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of go back and just kind of do kind of day-to-day -day operations, just kind of show you how s easy the solution is to kind of work with, just kind of uh, in just maybe more of a management type role uh, where I'm actually kind of looking and trying to get some data in and out of the particular system. Uh, so navigation itself is fairly simple. Uh, you'll see here we have uh, our contacts, our cases, our exposure sites, just very simple uh, options. There's some other options over here just because I'm in the system as somebody that can do lots of stuff in case there's questions. Uh, but for right now, we're just kind of kind of focus on that. So what I'm here is just kind of in our phone calls. Uh, and we talked about what we call views. So uh, this is a view here. And again, views are just kind of columns uh, across the top. And it kind of gives me any information uh, of rows, so rows of data uh, we can see. So if you think of views very similar to like an Excel spreadsheet with rows and columns, it uh, kind of works out. So we can do lots of different views. So maybe we just need to say, well, those are all active calls, but I just need to see what's remaining, what, what needs to be done. So I can actually do that. And again, you'll see a whole different kind of look and feel to that particular view. Uh, I could see kind of uh, incomplete calls, calls that were not, you know, incomplete. Maybe someone hung up, we got disconnected, et cetera, those kind of calls. And again, the way you actually work with views and create them is kind of limitless. You literally could have lots and lots and lots of views uh, to go through the data. Uh, the other thing we also have is kind of what we call inline analytics or being able to kind of create charts and graphs and information about that. So in here, we actually have kind of calls by zip code. Uh, we have lots of different charts. We kind of created uh, calls remaining, so whatever calls might be remaining, uh, calls by status, so what's the status piece on a particular call, uh, calls remaining a total. Now, one of the things we can also do, so if we go by zip code, uh, not only do we get this information, but if I wanted to see all the calls that are coming, it looks like obviously this zip code seems to have a lot of calls. I can click on that graphic and automatically filter just for that particular zip code on the left side of the screen. So whatever I click on on the right has a correlation on the left. So if I go here for these, this will just give me those particular nine cases or this one will just be the one case. I can actually click my mouse today. I can actually do that. So you can very quickly kind of go through and filter through literally thousands of records. I mean, we have a couple of hundred records here for our demonstration data, but you literally have could have thousands and thousands of data points 
uh, in here and be able to kind of flip through it that fast. Now, all the data is represented real time. So any of the calls I created or just did today or five minutes ago or two seconds ago will automatically be reflected as we go through uh, the information. Next thing we'll also look at is our, our cases. So again, uh, very similar kind of look and feel. We have lots of different uh, views for that. So maybe all active cases, cases done in the last seven days. And again, these views can be whatever you'd like. So maybe just for measles outbreaks, or we had one in here for Zika, just for Zika outbreaks. So I can filter this data uh, many different ways. Again, charts and graphs, a very similar model. So these are kind of, uh, cases by agent, so what agent is working on particular cases here. Uh, I could have uh, what uh, type of, whoop, wrong one, sorry, it's just some stuff, incident type, so what incident type was it? Was it immunization, was it exposure, etc. So we're able to get lots of data, and you'll just see this plus sign uh, that it's uh, that easy to kind of go in, kind of pick your kind of uh, uh, horizontal and vertical pieces and create your own charts and graphs if you have permissions to do that. Everything we're seeing in here is based on permissions. So I'm in the system right now as someone who's maybe more of a management level that I can see everything. Uh, but I might have this same view for active cases, but I am only allowed to see five of these cases because my role doesn't allow me to see all the cases. Same thing with hiding fields and those kind of things on the forms and those pieces. We can also do that. So if you're not authorized to see this type of maybe medical information on a client because you don't have access to it, we can actually uh, say, well, if you don't see that because you don't have access or that's not your role. Now, one additional piece we do have here is the ability of kind of making a, a different type of view, but doing some stuff in line, as we call it. So what I can do is actually change some of this data. So I'll just call this demo. So right in line, very much just like a spreadsheet, I can change this maybe from high to low or change any some of the information. You'll notice some of the information has little padlocks on it. Uh, that means I can't make those changes from this particular view. So it does allow us to make those changes very quickly and very easily, and that's a, a very nice option. We also have the ability of grouping the data. Let me just kind of save this real quick. Any way we do, so any field across the top. So maybe I want to sort this or group this by priority. So now what this did is this kind of grouped all the escalation, high, low, et cetera, by that particular priority. I could also do it by origin. If I wanted to go ahead and do it by origin, if I wanted to do it by that. Or maybe we're trying to get a handle on this and we do it by zip code. So here's all the zip codes kind of grouped together. Now, lastly, maybe I want to look at the data differently than somebody else. I want to know uh, basically uh, what the status is first. I can actually take this and just very simply drag and drop it and put that's the way I want to look at the data. Now, that's not a permanent change. This is a change for you to kind of walk through and just look at the data for that particular session. Next time we come in the solution or in the screen, that will be back to where it was. So we're not, you don't have uh, that. Now, you can go ahead and change views and add views. Uh, so we can do that. So just lots of different ways to do that. Uh, same thing here with the, the exposure surveys. So here's kind of our active surveys. We do have, again, our, our charts and graphs as we go through. So who's at risk? And if we want to just go through very easily, filter who's at risk and who's not at risk, we also can do a very similar thing grouping on that. So for our survey results, if we wanted to group at risk, remember I filtered everything over here at risk. So if I go through and actually pick over here, you'll notice that as I go through, it's changing it over here and just giving me those particular ones that I sorted on. Okay. Now, so many things we'd also do, let's go up to uh, cases. It's, again, we talked about a lot of tight integration with Microsoft Excel. So what you'll see up here uh, is the ability to kind of what we call run Excel templates. So if you want to take some of this data and you like the way it looks and feels in Excel, we can very easily kind of go ahead and create some. So you can create, there's some standard ones we get out of the box. Here, here's one I created. Uh, and we'll just uh, do a quick download. So what I did was I kind of took the data, created it, and the system allows you, and we'll show this in a second, to kind of either do the data dynamically or not dynamically. So I kind of created this spreadsheet uh, with some slicers. 
Uh, if you never use slicers, it's a nice way to kind of get to data very quickly. So we'll see here uh, maybe the call owner, the case owner. So we'll see what, what Camille's cases might be or my cases might be or how it came in. Did it come in via phone? Did it come in via uh, Twitter? And again, you could very easily filter this. What are the, just the high cases or the escalation cases or the normal cases? Whatever we want to go ahead and filter on, zip codes, et cetera, we can do that. Now, this can be as real time as you like, uh, meaning that uh, some of the next things we're going to kind of show you uh, in the solution is being able to actually ask questions of the data. We can have lots of reports and do that. We also can open the data by superimposing Excel on top of the data. And this is what we call Excel Online. So this is using the online capabilities of Office 365, uh, but you're still getting kind of spreadsheet functionality in here uh, as we go through. Where am I? There it is, there's my uh, piece. So uh, we could go through here and grab some data. We got lots of calls in here as we see, but we could go up here uh, and grab some data. So if we wanted to go up here and sum that, and maybe we just wanted to do a count. We could actually get some counts. We could do some sums of numbers. Uh, actually, I need some numbers here. Dates, average dates. You can do any of those calculations. You can also go in and modify data. So if I wanted to go here and modify this particular data, I could just go up here and, again, change data and try and change data at will. Again, some real nice things. And I could save that change, those changes, back to the Dynamics CRM system. The other thing is, reports are great, but you know, you might have 5,000 reports and you need 5,001, right? So being able to ask questions of the data is actually a key component of the solution. So the solution does come with a very nice query tool. I kind of hate to say query tool. That's really what it is because folks kind of get nightmares of other tools they've used. This is a Microsoft tool. So they make it very simple and fairly easy to use. Uh, when I go ahead and click the information, so what I want to do is I'm going to see what cases were created since... I know, last Friday or, you know, the, a particular date. So I can just go through it. Any of the fields we have that we have created in the system or added to the system, we'll just say created on. Now, the system also is smart enough to know that, well, it's a date. So I'm going to give you stuff that's a lot easier than kind of trying to remember eighth grade math and go this way and that way. Uh, I can say on or after. Yeah, that's really what I want. So I want on or after last Friday, which was the 12th. And I would go out and actually give results. And that would actually give me a query of all the particular cases that were created after that. Now, again, this doesn't circumvent security. So if I didn't have security to see some of these cases, I would not be able to see these particular cases. So now I have a list of cases. Uh, again, it tells you kind of where they came from. They came from uh, uh, Yammer Post, whatever they might be. Uh, but I can now take this particular piece and I can export them out. And I can export it out several different ways to Excel, like a static spreadsheet, just kind of set it and forget it. Uh, or two options here, we have a dynamic worksheet or a dynamic pivot table. Uh, so if I chose a dynamic worksheet, it's going to ask me if I want to grab any additional information for this query uh, or any additional columns. We'll just kind of leave it as it is. And I'll go ahead and enable that. And again, it grabs some lots of data from the solution itself. Now, with the dynamic option, uh, what it allows us to do is that makes a real-time connection back to our solution. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert, uh, I can say summarize it with a pivot table. So it's going to, I'll just create a quick pivot table here. So we'll just do uh, maybe origin over there, case number here, actually a case number over there, Matt. Uh, and then owner over here, right? So very easy, very quick, uh, where the users were, et cetera. I can do lots of other data. Now, of course, this is Excel, so you can do all the Excel-y things you like. You can change the table. You can do conditional formatting, all that lovely stuff we love to do in Excel. Uh, do that. We can insert charts and graphs. I mean, there's nothing. Uh, I'm not doing anything special that I'm sure no, he's not done 4,000 times on the line here. But one of the nice things about this is I can just add this chart is I now take this spreadsheet and I save it to my desktop, I save it to SharePoint, I can even email it to somebody. When they open up the spreadsheet or the next time I open up the spreadsheet, I get fresh data from that original query. 
So when I'm going through there, every time I double click on that spreadsheet, I get new information. So let's just say I done that kind of formatted spreadsheet the way I wanted to do it, and I could do it. But again, this also keeps that security in context. So if I open up the spreadsheet and I can't see information, I'm only going to see the data I'm supposed to see with that particular spreadsheet. Okay. Let me kind of close out of here. Last thing I did want to show you also was some of the uh, advanced analytic pieces that we can also leverage with the Microsoft platform. Two kind of uh, embellished dashboards that I created. Uh, one was for, I call it the information center manager. So much more of a management uh, type look and feel. So in here we kind of have a snapshot of kind of Maybe are my total active cases, the resolved cases, incoming. You'll see here kind of more mapping type of views, uh, calls by zip code, lots of different ways to kind of do graphics, et cetera. Uh, but this is fully drillable also. So let me go ahead here and click on the zip code area. Uh, and what you do is the, the solution is kind of connected together. So no matter where we click, so if I go up here, you'll see all the other information change. Or if I go here, that data will then correspond to that data, or this data will then correspond to that data. So again, using some more of the uh, uh, add-ons and the solution pieces, really, really powerful graphics, and again, 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 very nice idea on what we may need to do next. Now, we also built one for research analysts. Another set of users that we have found with the solution is our research folks. Uh, in municipalities or just research in general, because again, they need to do uh, some due diligence. You know, we're having outbreaks, we're having uh, that, they need to get a hold of it. So this might be more of a research analyst. And again, you'll see more mapping information, uh, our percentage of kind of completed surveys uh, as we go through, uh, kind of our summary of that risk. And you'll notice as I hover over the data, it kind of gives me the percentage of what the, you know, the percentage of the first one, the previous one, so it gives me some pretty detailed information as I hover over any of the data. And just like the other information, they're all kind of connected together. Uh, so if I was to go up here, uh, you'll see it just change all the other information from here versus there. Uh, also by uh, location, so if I go by location, it'll actually say how many were at that particular location, uh, so we can do that. Now again, this information is dynamically uh, brought in from the system and we can kind of make these charts and graphs. Now we have a few minutes left. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come back in here and kind of open it up for Q&A. And let's see if we have any Q&A. Let me get this going here. Come on, Matt. All right. I'll jump back in here. This is this Patriot again, guys. Thank you so much, Matt, um, for going through that. Thank you, Camille, for jumping in with that that question in the middle there. Um, as Matt just said, we do have another couple of minutes, so guys, please use the dashboard on the right-hand side of your screen to enter any questions you have. Um, we did have a couple come in at the tail end there. Um, so we've got, how long does a typical installation take? Uh, that, <laughs> well, that, that always is a good one. We say it depends, uh, right? Uh, I'll let Camille talk about some of the ones we've done, but again, it really depends. This solution is, uh, you know, we have these the basic configuration kind of ready to go with kind of the screens and a lot of the information you saw. Uh, and again, that would always need kind of embellishment and some changes. Uh, so again, it could be uh, X days, it could be X months. It really just right. depends on the client. Yeah, so I think, you know, with these um, uh, with these sort of solutions that we have pre-built, we can get them up and running pretty quickly um, if there isn't a lot of uh, customization for the particular um, uh, use case, right? So maybe five days to install, you know, install and initialize the, the solution, maybe some slight um, configuration adjustments to some of the business processes, maybe you know one of the, the out of the uh, one of the um, canned surveys, things like that, and then some um, some quick training. Um, but this would be sort of that base solution, the case management, the the call piece. <clears throat> if you wanted to add additional pieces like the advanced analytics that Matt was just showing, or some of the social engagement pieces, then that obviously would would um, make uh, would take a little bit longer to install and initialize those pieces as well. Okay, gotcha. Thank you, guys. Um, we've got. Can this solution run on-premise, or does it have to be in the cloud? 
Yeah, so uh, Microsoft, uh, actually the solution can run on-premise, so Microsoft still has on-premise solution, and we were close showing the cloud version today, uh, but Microsoft does have uh, an on-premise solution, and uh, they are working actually on the next release of Dynamics CRM, uh, and they're actually coming up with some kind of hybrid solutions uh, for the next release, so they're actually making it very interesting for folks to kind of gradually kind of migrate uh, and just kind of choose pieces that they may, may want to move to the cloud, uh, and then may keep on-premise, but the solution will run today on-premise or in the cloud. Great, and that actually dovetails nicely into the next one because um, somebody asked, will this only run on Microsoft? <laughs> Yeah, that, that, that's a question we get a lot. Uh, some of my background is I spent 10 years at Microsoft, uh, I guess during the uh, Windows uh, NT and Windows days and uh, Office only running on Microsoft stuff. Uh, the world's kind of changed and uh, Microsoft uh, thankfully has changed with it. So this solution basically, you saw we did most of the presentation in a browser. Uh, any kind of what we call modern browser, so uh, I was actually doing a demonstration in Chrome, Chrome IE, Safari, uh, pretty much any platform, mobile uh, platform, iOS, Android, uh, or the Microsoft mobile pieces, or pretty much anything that is using what we call modern browsers. Uh, Microsoft has that as updated all the time, but that is really one of the nice things about the solution is it is browser-based, uh, so it's very quickly, it is really no install on the desktop. You can literally set these, let's say, a command center up for an outbreak in you know a matter of hours and get going because you don't have to do anything special so if you had a cloud solution and set up you know 20 laptops you literally could have 20 folks log in and start using the system in under an hour uh, or even faster than that just because it's just browser based great thank you um, it looks like we don't have any more questions um, so that concludes the presentation today, and thank you again, Matt, so much, and thank you, Camille, and thank you, everybody on the line for attending today's webinar. Again, that's Keeping Your Citizens Safe, a Proactive Approach to Managing Public Health Threats. Um, as I mentioned, this is being recorded, and you'll receive a follow-up email with a link to the report in the next few business days. If you have any immediate questions, um, please contact Matt directly at m p a n z a n o at akaes.com. On behalf of AKA, thank you again so much for joining us and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.